Hi, I used to write video game reviews. I don't do that anymore, uh, but I got a camera and a YouTube channel, so I'm just gonna kind of talk through my thoughts here. Because I just beat Hitman 3 last night. Now, I love, love, love the Hitman series. Uh, just one of my absolute favorites. I was very, very excited for 3. And I think 3 is a great game, but I had some major frustrations with it last night. So let me, let me talk them out here a little bit. Hitman is at its best when it is, here is a big, uh, elaborately designed, you know, tons of variety location. You know, all these different cities around the world, this globe hopping uh, thing with all these like big ornate mansions or these crazy like big parties or uh, like Dubai, this huge skyscraper and everything. And then the gameplay is, here's a couple of jerks. It's usually a couple like rich a-holes or whatever uh, that you need to take out. And here's a bunch of disguises. Here's a bunch of weapons. You figure it out. It's a big open world. It's a, it's a world of assassination, as they say. Go out there, take them out. And then it's up to you to figure out hilarious ways to kill them, efficient ways to kill them, stealthy way to kill them, chaotic ways to kill them. But ultimately, it is, it is this huge sandbox, and you have ultimate control over how things go down. And... That always worked great with my play style. I like just kind of like messing around and, and seeing what happens if, if I try a bunch of weird shit. The stuff I disliked the most in previous games were things like when you had to destroy the virus in Sapienza or a level like a Whittleton Creek in Hitman 2, which it, it's a really, really cool level in the suburbs, these parties and stuff and, and uh, the two targets. But then every time I kill those two targets, I'm like, oh, right, I can't just leave. I have to go like search around some addicts to download something or, or pick up a file or something. It really kind of screws up the flow of these levels when you're not just going out and assassinating guys and leaving. Hitman 3 starts extremely strongly with Dubai, which Dubai is exactly what I want out of a Hitman location. It is gorgeous to look at. It's intricate. Uh, you know, the idea of being on like the, the top of the tallest building in the world and everything, and you've just got, got these two targets. Get these two targets and get the hell out. Skydive off the building if you want to. And it never felt like it was encouraging me to do things in a certain way. Now, there are mission stories there for variety in different ways if you want to try to kill guys in certain ways, but they never felt like a burden. There aren't these like side objectives. There aren't these like longer periods of waiting for a guy to go through the whole level or anything. It's all just very smooth. Get in, get out, kill him in whatever fashion you deem. Completely open, fun sandbox. That is what I want out of Hitman 3. Now, Dartmoor, the second location, it mixes things up and adds things, but I feel like it's just the right amount. Like, they clearly want you to go down this private investigator route. Uh, it's this very kind of like knives out, murder mystery thing. It's very elaborate and, and fun. And honestly, it would be kind of a shame not to experience that. Like, if I just went into Dartmoor and just, you know, killed the target and left, I would feel like I, I missed out on this really uh, specifically crafted murder mystery thing. This was an example of them trying something new and bold and it really working in Hitman 3. And I think there are examples of it going in the other direction, unfortunately. Now Berlin, the third level, ultimately the most forgettable uh, level for me. It's cool. It's like I like the idea of like you don't know how many targets there are in this like German rave club or whatever. Um, there's some cool stuff here. Not a lot that stuck with me outside of that weird uh, trash junk sword thing. I need to go back and spend some more time with that thing. But uh, ultimately, not a lot to say about this one. Now, from Berlin on, I feel like I got progressively more frustrated and disappointed with every level. Uh, so the next one is Chongqing. And visually, it's really cool. It's in this, like, rainy kind of Blade Runner-looking city. There's a lot of uh, just, like, balconies and railings that you can just shove people off of. That's always a good time. There's also this really cool idea at the heart of it of... There's this massive science facility that's just hiding amongst this, like, dense urban area in China. But walking around in this area, I felt like there's like a little too much security, a little too much scanning. I never really felt free in this area. And I get that they want to introduce, you know, places that are like super high security and, and not easy to get access to. But ultimately, I didn't find uh, walking around this area to be particularly fun. And I found the target actually earlier than I thought I would. I actually I mean, killed her and I, and I killed her guard. I got the disguise. I could have walked away from it. But I also kind of felt like, ah, that was that was unceremonious. Um, I feel like there's got to be a cooler way to do that after all this walking around this facility. I mean, I'd rather do a thing. And sure enough, I did find a pretty cool uh, mission story where I just, you know, torched her in this, like, giant science chamber thing. So ultimately, I'm glad I did that. 
The second target kind of went to shit for me. So this guy, Hush, is at the top of this apartment building doing weird science stuff. And when I got up there, he was broken. Uh, he was just sitting down, standing up, sitting down, standing up. And it was clear that for the mission, I needed to go sit in the chair next to him. But I wasn't able to uh, trigger this for a long time. So it was a lot of time just kind of fiddling with it, trying to get him to, to sit down in the chair. Finally, it did happen. And once that happens... It does this kind of like long story thing where it's, it's, it's like this brain dance thing where you both have these uh, things on your head and everything. But then he leaves and comes back. And ultimately, I don't know if the scripting was broken or what happened, but it was literally I, I checked the time code. It was like a half hour of me trying to get all the things in place for this mission kill to happen. You know, I'm trying to get him sitting there. I'm trying to get me sitting there. Okay, now he's leaving. Now I got to wait for him to do this whole loop back around, see if he wants to sit down or if he's just going to stand there or freak out because he saw something. And ultimately, after a half hour, he sits down. I kill him. You know, if I went up there and I and I fulfilled this as, as a quick mission kill, it might have been pretty cool. But after all of this messing around, it just didn't really seem worth it and just felt very anticlimactic. Now, this next one, Mendoza, was definitely the biggest disappointment for me because at the outset, it seems like it checks every box that I want from a Hitman level. It is the big, fancy, rich person party. It's this, like, cool estate, but it's got this, this sprawling, uh, like, the grounds around it with a bunch of varied stuff. There's, like, a winery. There's kind of a cool, like, mission thing where you dress up and you're, you're harvesting grapes or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, lots of different areas and everything. Uh, I thought visually and like location wise and everything, I thought Mendoza was really, really awesome and uh, actually had probably my favorite uh, mission story kill in the game. Now, where it really fell apart for me was the story mission with the the mustache guy, the second guy I had to kill. And at first, I thought this was going to be a cool thing. Like, he's having this, like, super elite uh, dinner or whatever, and it seems like it wants you to dress up as this wine dude and get the super fancy wine that's, like, in a vault and bring it in. And, like, I thought, oh, cool. Okay, I'll get to dress up and do some stealthy stuff and pretend I'm the wine guy. I don't know if I poison the wine or go in there and, and shoot him in the head in some way or whatever. But instead... You go in, first of all, it, it takes too long to, to get the wine. There's way too much, uh, like, it's not very clear how to get in. It, it, it seems overcomplicated for getting the wine. And then you go in, you bring the wine into the dinner thing. And, again, it's one of those things where it's like, I could have just shot him and tried to get out right there. But I felt like, okay, the game wants me to see something here. They planned something kind of bespoke, a certain kill here. So let's let's see it out. Let, let's Let's give it the benefit of the doubt here. And you stand there and you listen to the speech for a really, really long time. And then it just gets, this is the most unclear thing I, I've seen in any Hitman game that I can remember, is a little timer pops up when Diana's leaving the room. And it says, get to Diana. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, I'm used to when, when an objective pops up in a video game, especially one that has a big timer on it. That means, hey, it's go time. You got to go do this thing. Uh, and so I run after her. She's like going up the stairs. It's not the game's not telling me like, wait, I, I got to Diana. Like, what, what am I supposed to do here? And it was just incredibly unclear. I had to do a bunch of different loads and saves and stuff. Whereas, like, am I supposed to kill the guy and then run upstairs with her? Does she need to get to a specific location and then I have to go up and join her? Um, once I did get up there. It took forever because I just had to like sit in this chair and it took the guy so long. I'm just sitting there just waiting in the hopes that something's going to pay off here instead of just playing it kind of the way I normally would, which is like, let's just find a fun way to kill this guy and get out of here. But I'm like, OK, let's let's see it out. Let's 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 see what happens here. And I just wait forever and ever and ever. And this guy makes it up there. And again, they're just talking and talking. And this is coming right off the heels of a really long talk at the dinner thing and an unclear objective. And then the long path up to the thing. And then I'm just listening to this uh, back and forth between Diana and the mustache guy. And ultimately, it just it took way too long. It was way too unclear. And I felt like it was stripping away the parts of Hitman that I really liked where it was just like, hey, get out there, have fun, kill the guys, get out. It was disappointing to me to walk into this huge, open, awesome-looking level, and then for my first playthrough of it, 
I spent so much of it uh, wrestling with unclear objectives or just waiting for things to happen instead of exploring and having fun and getting into trouble. And maybe it's on me for being stubborn and like wanting to see these mission stories through and not just rely on my like dumb hitman instincts, but I felt like they were there for a reason and for at least my first time through, I wanted to see them out and I wanted to see how they played out. And honestly, sometimes those are really cool, like, uh, you know, the, the, the smasher thing or, or the fire chamber in Chong King. But then more often than not, I felt like these were anticlimactic. Uh, they, they were drawn out. They were finicky and ultimately just really unsatisfying. And then the last level is the Carpathian Mountains, and uh, this is where the game completely lost the plot for me. Uh, I feel like this level stripped away everything I love about Hitman and just kind of turned it into, it felt like a, uh, like a B-tier 360 third-person action level. It felt, Hitman is such a unique series, and I felt like this last level, it's just this train level with a bunch of guards, and you just go from car to car to car to car to car. It lasts longer than you'd want it to, just shooting guys. And it's like, this is, this is, it is, it doesn't get much more linear than a train. You're going from point A to point B, shooting guys along the way. I don't know how many times I've done that in a, in a Gears of War or an Uncharted or GoldenEye or before, you know, it's, it is a standard train level. Uh, and it, it was a really, really disappointing way to end the modern Hitman trilogy. It's, I, I'm struggling to think of a level I enjoyed less than this one. This was probably the worst level in modern Hitman. And I know it's, it's technically possible. They, they give you places to blend in and you could do stealth and work your way through the train, but that just sounds super laborious and not at all the way I like to play Hitman and, and doesn't take advantage of the things I think Hitman does so well, typically. At the end, I'm sure whatever happens at the end with the dude at the end is cool if you're like somebody who's really into Hitman lore or something. But by the end of this, I just wanted to blast this dude and get out. It just felt like a slog. And the story is not what I come to Hitman for. What's going on? Oh, okay. Fucking whatever. At the end of the day, for the first time in a modern Hitman game, I am pretty disappointed with my first playthrough. That said, these levels are so cool. The levels themselves are probably the strongest overall collection of levels I've seen in uh, any of the last three Hitman games. So I've got hope that I will be able to go back to these levels and play them my way now that kind of the burden of the mission stories or feeling like I needed to do it the right way for my first playthrough uh, is gone. But with Hitman 1 and 2, I never even felt that on my first playthrough, uh, outside of the occasional thing like, like Whittleton Creek. Like the virus thing on Sapienza was cool the first time. It's annoying subsequent times. The clues thing on Whittleton Creek I thought was annoying every time. And I feel like so much of Hitman 3 is leaning more on that stuff like those clues in Whittleton Creek. It's, it's going away from the assassination. It's going away from the freedom. It's just kind of like, go here, press this button, or wait for this thing to happen. Wait for this guy to go through a scripting and go up the stairs or whatever. Wait for this conversation to end. It is uh, going away from the things that make Hitman super unique and making it, at times, kind of boring. And you're just waiting for things to happen. And that is not at all uh, what I think of when I think of Hitman. Seeing them lean in to things like the story and the objectives, you know, the things that weren't the strongest part of previous Hitman games, and lean a, a little bit away from the freedom, uh, specifically in that last level. That last level did not feel free in any way, and that was disappointing. My guess is I'm gonna keep playing this game, in my opinion, is going to improve on it, because I don't feel like there was anything actually stopping me from playing the game my way this first time. I think I just felt like a weird obligation to see these mission stories through and do it the right way. Uh, but I think now that I, I've kind of got that off my back my first time through, I think I can go into these levels. I think I could go into M Mendoza and really appreciate it for just how kind of like vast and sprawling and, and cool that level is and not have to worry about, oh, am I supposed to chase Diana? Oh, I got to sit in this chair and wait for this guy to come up the stairs. I'll get to just kind of do things my way and enjoy it the way I've enjoyed previous Hitman levels. Ultimately, disappointed with my first playthrough, but there is a ton of potential here and I really do think that I will enjoy my time going forward with Hitman 3 probably more than I enjoyed this first time through.